Yo, 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 what up? It's your boy, Isaac Anzu. <coughs> Mr. Scamera. Extraordinaire. Uh, <laughs> I've still been thinking about songs that have Chimera in them. Chimera? Chimera? Chimera. Bam, 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 bam. Chimera. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so... Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome, Incorporation Nation. It's your boy, the lyrical, clerical, chimerical VTuber, Eyes Gonzu. Pocket Square enthusiast. <laughs> uh, oh, what's this? My, my background music has lyrics. Oh, well. It's way too loud. It's way too loud. There we go. Much better. So today we have a, a watch along stream. Uh, we are watching <laughs> Steam download Shadow of the Air Tree. Mm -hmm. Six and a half minutes remaining. <gasps> But then it's got to patch it in, you know. Can't have nice things. Got to got to wait even longer. Uh, yeah, the new DLC's out. So exciting. Beat them up, have a good time. And yet. Yeah, I have a stream already. Uh, <laughs> I have a stream already, uh, you know, planned out. What am I going to do? How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do, uh, Elden Ring? If I've already got something going on. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Five minutes, five and a half minutes remaining. <coughs> um. Yeah, I don't, I, I actually have not been doing much research on the DLC. I've just been very busy. Very, very busy. Trying to, uh, well, I finally get in a good place at work and there's been so much social stuff happening. Who am I? I'm not the introvert that I once believed I am. Well, I, I, was, I always knew I was a social introvert. I need my alone time. I need my quiet time. What do they call that? Ambivert. Yeah, I went to a beer garden on Wednesday and I watched the football game or soccer, I guess. Some people would know it as. But like American football, you don't even use your feet all that often. They do have, like, kicks. But soccer is just the most obvious candidate for the term football. Actually, uh, it's kind of funny. The difference in Germany is that if you say football, people will assume that you're talking about American football. But if you say foosball, which is the German word, then people will assume you're talking about soccer. But in America, we actually also have foosball, but but it's like the table version where you'd spin the little guys, kick, kick, kick the ball, you know? 
um, totally different, right? A totally different scenario. Um, but in Germany, they call that like tisch kicker, which is like table kicker. Right. Let me look it up. Open up germandictionary.com. It's actually called dict.cc if you ever want a good German dictionary. Uh, tisch, Tischkicker. Yep. The football table, foosball table, tisch kicker, table kicker. Two minutes remaining. Two minutes remaining. Oh, wait. Two minutes and eight seconds remaining. Okay, now two minutes remaining. Don't make a fool out of me. Steam. Uh, the little line is going, going so good. Struggling, getting towards the end. Well, the line always goes up, but the time remaining changes based on changes in megabytes per second, which probably is not like great right now because I'm also streaming, right? <laughs> Although, isn't upload speed and download speed different? Upload speed and download speed is like separate. Lumi says yes. Float away. Float away. Okay, I, <laughs> my voice is very uh, bassy in the morning, and I have to adjust for for music. But uh, all of y'all watching the VOD on this can't even hear what I'm talking about. We're listening to a band called Spongle. Spongle today. Um, it's like, it's like Prague EDM punk-ish with, uh, with a lot of Indian music influences. <gasps> One, zero. Oh, it's done. I thought I was going to have to. Uh... Oh, my goodness. I thought it was going to have to. Uh... Patch as well. Hell yeah. We did it, boys. We downloaded Elden Ring. <laughs> Elden Ring downloads complete. Woo! Oh, hi, Demi. Welcome. Uh, I hope that you are uh, well today. <laughs> Elden Ring has been downloaded. Spongle is playing in the background. And I'm discussing the slight differences between football, foosball, foosball, and tish kicker. Tish kicker. Ay. Demi, you are a, a slime creature, right? Tish kicker. Well, there's a C in it as well. Oh, there's two C's in Tish kicker, I guess. Is that a Canadian thing? And yeah, yeah. And it's not a Canadian thing. It's a German thing. So, um, so okay. Let's go through this again. Football is American football. Foosball is soccer. Uh, but in America, we also have uh a foosball table, right? Foosball table. 
or 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 like a, a I don't know what you call it soccer table, and that's what they call the tish kicker. You're so close, except there's only one e. <laughs> is it a Canadian thing? I... Yes. Is it? No. I'm not Canadian. <laughs> Um, yes, but I think it's funny that in Germany, a foosball table is just called table kicker. Actually, a lot of German words are like that. Just very obvious um, combinations of words. Like instead of gums, it's called tooth meat. Instead of... Uh, a bat. They call it a flying mouse. Stuff like that. Kicker table. Table kick? Kick? Isn't there a game called Table Flipper? Yes. I think there is. I'm not streaming to you. <laughs> <laughs> Lumi's, Lumi's all like, I want to participate. Oh. Get over here then. Well, then sleep. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Table flipper. Wait. Table flip simulator. Oh, is it free? Oh, no, it's just not out yet. Planned release date 2025. Cool, cool. Oh, and it's part of the IGN Summer of Gaming. <laughs> the IGN Summer of Gaming has a typo right on the front page of its page. That's hilarious. It says, what is Summer of Gaming 2024? But the title of the the section is IGN Summer of Gaming 2023-4. So you have to wait a while to the year 20,234 in order to in order to uh view the IGN Summer of Gaming. Oh, it's all all coming soon stuff. Squirrel with a gun. Yes. Um, squirrel with a nine millimeter pistol. Why? We don't know. But he can jump around using said gun and defeat what look to be government agents. Okay, I have to stop watching this video and stream. <laughs> um, yeah. So I got to experience a football game, foosball game, for the first time. Well, it's really the first time I've experienced like a European foosball game. I played I played soccer when I was, you know, very small chimera. But I remember there was one game that they assigned me to the goalie. And it was like, you know, kids playing, right? So everybody just took turns being the goalie or being the forwards or whatever. Nobody actually was any good. Nobody had a position that they were actually um, working on. But I was the goalie. And I remember... Th that day, my team was really quite good. And so I just ended up spending the most of the match just staring at the sky, just being like, wow, they sure are playing hard over there. And I don't know why this boring ass memory has stuck with me for so long. But here I am talking about it. The age of 344. 
Wow. 344? Yeah. You know, after after you hit 100, it's, you just stop keeping track of the individual, like, number. Right? I'm in my 300s. That's, that's the important part. Right? Yeah, I, I played a lot of different random sports growing up. Last time I played soccer of any kind was PE soccer. Yeah. I mean, if you count gym class, I played a ton of different sports. Although I will say there was a <laughs> there was a day in PE that I remember quite well. Well, actually, there are a couple days in PE that I remember quite well. One of them was the um the what was it was it the the standard like presidential fitness exam right when you hear the beep beep stuff like that <laughs> all the actual soccer kids stacked on one team and my being tall and a leg blocker being non-stop goalie was very annoying oh yeah i mean I think goalie is an interesting position because it's very different than the other positions, but it is pretty boring. Uh, apparently, Germany's team is very skilled on defense, and so the ball is, like, just constantly over in the other side of the field. And uh, my friend was telling me that the goalie is well known for running out near the end of the game and taking shots of his own. I'm like, of course he is. He's got to be bored. Sitting there the entire time, just watching his team, you know, <laughs> be awesome. Germany's team is really good, apparently. Uh, like... I guess a lot of good soccer players come from Germany. But I was thinking about that, actually. And I was thinking about this picture that I saw of, like, it was like a the Olympic basketball game, right? And it was the American team versus... It was the American women's team uh, versus the... I don't know, Republic of wherever team. And like all the American girls were so much taller, right? And like crazy taller. And of course, I think they won. But it got me it, it got me thinking like, of course, you know, if you have more people in your country, you're going to find the best people you can. And uh, that's naturally going to lead to an average skill level increase. So I think that Germany is a really popular place for people to uh, immigrate to. And because of that, you end up getting really, really good players who have German citizenship, right? Just because the average is so much higher. I noticed that there was a quite a bit of uh, diversity on the German team in, you know, name, skin color, uh, that sort of stuff. Larger populations leading to greater incidences of high performing outliers. Exactly. Um, I think the other I think the other thing is that in that picture of uh, or or more frequent incidences. Yeah. Um, I think in that picture, the other thing was they were talking about how like the U.S. athletes probably had more expensive training 
and diet regimens as well, which could be. But I think a lot, I think most countries are interested in putting on a good showing at the Olympics. And maybe a tiny country uh, from wherever was not interested in doing very well at the basketball showing. But it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty old school way of thinking. It's a pretty old style of thinking to think that just because a country is not a first world country that they don't have access to like technology and nutrition information, you know. The internet exists in Africa. Actually, the internet is better in Africa because the infrastructure is newer. <laughs> which is kind of which is kind of wild to think about. The internet goes faster in Africa. Meanwhile, my Berlin internet keeps cutting out. It makes sense when you think about it, but it's not it's not the prevailing um, image people have in their heads, right? And people don't make decisions based on, you know, carefully researched uh, data. They make decisions based on how they feel. <coughs> Less prior development leads to more access to faster tech since that's available now. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's actually, I, I have experienced this in my own life. Um, when I started streaming, um, also the music is going wild right now. I hope you in, in, are enjoying it. Uh, when I started streaming, I experienced those, those, those early content creator feelings, you know, like, Oh my God, my numbers. Oh man, the numbers are so, so changing. Why are they doing the change? What's happening? How do I, how do I, how do I do the change? What's the, what's the, what's the secrets of, of social media and content creation? And I, realized that if I had started content creation at a younger age, I would not know how to deal with those feelings productively. As an older chimera, I'm, I've been through stuff like that before. I've been through schooling. I've been through competitions. I, I've dealt with interpersonal relationships good and bad and i know the value of you know the 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 crowd's adoration versus the individuals whatever right um yeah it's it's not uh <laughs> it's not new territory for me and i think that really really helped because God, I would have been a mess, absolutely a mess uh, with all the um, with all the stuff that was kind of getting blasted at me, uh, all this data, all these tips on how to do this, do that, be a better streamer. I'm not surprised that that it takes a very specific kind of person to overcome that and continue streaming. You know, we've we've reached 550 ish followers on here, and I attribute that mostly to the fact that I've been streaming for God, like three years. Pretty much nonstop with some with some breaks with my Internet is destroyed, but uh, pretty much nonstop. Uh, small, small technical hiatuses. But um, the, 
the important thing is what what is the point? What is my point? I kind of lost where I'm going. I I I got I got wrapped up in thinking about the stupid internet <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Oh, the point is that you need time. You need time to learn the system. You need time to develop your persona. You need time to uh, kind of learn the technology, learn the learn the community, learn the culture. And in order to get to that point where you have the time, under your belt you need to overcome the early hurdles of you know performance of social media and i found that because of my life experience those hur hurdles were not nearly as difficult as i think they would have been when i was younger Oh my god, it's the fame, it is the famous Sir Isaac. Hello, Gomal. Uh, Gomal, how's the, how, how is the internet where you are? Are you, you are in India, right? Um, how's the internet? We're talking about how the internet is better in Africa. <laughs> well, uh, it's faster in Africa, right? It's the internet is faster in Africa because the infrastructure is newer. And I was talking about how emotionally I felt the same way. I'm an older chimera. I'm a more mature and experienced chimera. And uh, that helps. <laughs> India, internet is doing fine, somehow surviving. Oof, that's how I feel sometimes. I have been upgrading every part of my rig recently in order to try to deal with internet stuff. And I think I'm finally at a point where the internet is stable from my device, right? So I changed out my cable. I changed out a ton of settings on my computer. Oh, we got a new router, all this sort of stuff. Uh, the internet is finally kind of stabilized as far as things that I can buy and control. But <laughs> now we're getting now we're getting like legitimate like internet hiccups from the from the from the internet. And, and you know, I've heard that I've heard that people are having internet trouble all over the all over the world. And I wonder. There's an XKCD comic where he talks about how uh so much of the internet is held up by tiny little um, tiny little pieces of, of code that are thanklessly maintained by someone uh, who invented them like 30 years ago. And when those when those things break, or somebody makes something that doesn't cooperate with those pieces of code and they can't update it, right? The internet falls apart. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we're going through an internet falling apart moment. But I can't just Google, why is the internet connection so bad lately? Because that would not reveal any secrets. The mysteries would remain mysteries. But yeah, despite that, you know, my my bit rate is high and my dropped frames are low. So as long as the actual Internet doesn't disappear, I am. I am capable of streaming. I have upgraded my stuff more than a little bit. And I am happy about it. That said, the most recent upgrade that I'm interested in is the upgrade to Elden Ring. 
<laughs> the DLC is out, but we've got work to do here. We've got work to do. An Unreal Engine, which I should probably open up. It takes a while to open up. BRB, why thank you. Ho ho. Discord is telling me that I'm live. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, can I just, there we go. Okay. Unreal Engine is loading. It, it takes a little while. Honestly, today's going to be kind of a weird day because the goal, the goal of today is to get my guy into Unreal. I have a guy. I don't even know if I can get the guy into Unreal. Um, let's see. Putting Blender models. What? Wait, hold up. Put your blender in the freezer? What? What? Oh, okay. There were people saying, put your blender in a microwave. And they're talking about beauty blenders, which are not, they're not blenders. They're like sponges. And you can put those in a microwave. Do not put your blender in a microwave, please. Um, okay. Put, no, wait, what was I, was it? Put Blender model in Unreal Engine 5. The quick and easy blender to Unreal workflow. This is what I want. Thank you. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, okay. Well, Khan wanted me to do a stream where I just talked the entire time. Uh, it's not today. I want to get started on this. Someday. We'll do a stream where we end up just talking the whole day. But for now, uh, let's go to the desk. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to do, I wanted to try something today. We're going to do the burp face. <laughs> It looks really good with the glasses on it. Okay, this is my face to fit. <laughs> oh my god, what am I doing with myself? What the hell am I doing with my life? All right. So you want to export your Blender scene to Unreal Engine. Before you do that, you have to understand that there are two similar but different workflows. Scenario 1, you've made a whole scene and want to export it to Unreal. Uh -huh. Go to File, Export, FBX. If you've already applied materials to your mesh, 
set the path mode to copy and make sure the checkbox next to it this is, is enabled. Simply drag and drop your file into Unreal and choose import all. Now filter by static mesh or whatever you're looking for and drag the assets into your scene. With all the meshes selected, hit this icon to create a new folder that contains all the selected meshes. This way you stay organized without having to manually select everything. Even though Unreal automatically created the materials with the right textures for you, not all the settings from Blender are adopted properly in Unreal. Sometimes not even all the maps are imported, so you might have to take some time and manually correct your shaders. Now the important thing about this method is that all your meshes share the same pivot point. In case your scale is incorrect, this makes it incredibly easy to scale or rotate your whole scene without having to readjust every single object. If you want to change the pivot point of an individual object, simply enter modeling mode, scroll down and adjust the pivot point to your liking. Now hold up. Does, does Unreal have a modeling mode? That's pretty simple. Modeling mode. Mo modeling mode. Activate modeling mode. All oh, right. There was one thing I wanted to do. Now that we've set the ambient occlusion off, I want to. All right, it's directional light, right? Directional light, the rotation. Oh. So your default values. What's sky like? Sky sphere. There we go. So this is this is how it should look without the uh <clears throat> without the uh occlusion on star's brightness ooh make them stars bright that's a lot isn't it So, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, cancel. Go back to the directional light. And now... Now we can control the... the daytimeness.
you can still kind of see the stars if you look real close. Did I fuck up the sun? I think I fucked up the sun. Go back to the sky sphere. Sun brightness at 75. Uh, that's pretty bright. We do like 55. Huh. Uh, the sun is not moving. Atmosphere and clouds. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. See, now the sun is, is working. So we kind of have to set up the scene and then refresh the sky sphere if we want the sun to be in the shot. Okay, all right, all right, all right, cool. Scenario 2, you've made assets that you want to scatter all over your scene. Before you export them, hit Alt-G to reset the location. This way, the pivot point of your exported mesh, which is always the center of your scene, is going to be in the right place. If not, adjust it accordingly. I know there are many different workflows, but this is the one I prefer. There are probably add-ons that can do this even quicker, but I try to avoid any third-party stuff, as it usually works fine until I'm on a deadline. Just keep in mind that even though the textures are saved within the FBX file, anything else is not going to be saved. Even simple nodes like color ramp, noise or bump to normal conversions are not going to be translated. If you want to bring that over to Unreal, you have to bake the textures. And that is something I absolutely hate, so I'll simply put a link to another tutorial in the description. One more trick, if you're working on your scene and realize that you have to go back into Blender to change a few things, there's an incredibly easy way to do this. Do the things you need to do, make sure your mesh is selected and go to Export, FBX and limit your export to selected objects. Back in Unreal, create a folder for your new meshes and import the FBX file. Select the mesh in your scene, swap out the static meshes and you're done. You might have to reapply your material, but that also takes only a few seconds, so yeah. All you have to do now is to make sure you watch this video next. So you want to export your Blender scene. Oh boy. All right. I might be... I might be in over my head here. Uh, okay. Let's go to the center of the world. Which is apparently about here all right let's open up blender blender oh. how many programs can my computer handle handle oh uh-huh Blender. Oh, look, it's the shot from the thumbnail. Incredible. All right. Um, let's select the armature, go into pose mode, select 
select all, uh, alt G, alt R, alt S. All right. Um, there we go. This is our guy. He is at the center. He is, he is sticking at the center. Perfect. Got a couple cameras in here. Turn off those. Um, was it Shift S? Cursed World Origin. Perfect. Okay. Export. As an FBX. All right. Let's so watch this video again. One, you've made a whole scene and want to export it to Unreal. Go to File, Export, FBX. If you've already applied materials to your mesh, set the path mode to copy and make sure the checkbox next to it is enabled. Simply drag and drop your file into Unreal and choose Import All. Now filter by static mesh. All right, let's... Uh... Oh God, where am I going to put this? Blender. Let's uh, put it in the UE5 folder. Is it working? Did it work? Uh, uh, <laughs> my guy. My guy. FBX. Okay. Good. 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 Very good. Or whatever you're looking for. All right, close this. Ah, uh, be big. All right, go into here. Characters. A uh, new folder. Let's call this business guy. Let's drag him in. Oh, right. Okay. Skeleton. None. None. He has a skeleton. Okay. Failure. Multiple roots are found in the bone hierarchy. We only support single root bone. Ah, okay. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. That's what I was afraid of. So what does that mean? Does that mean... I think what that means is... What? Is it possible to, uh, let's see, Blender animations to Unreal Engine 5. Import rigs and animation. So you have a character and animations that need to go to Unreal. Not a problem. So I'm just going to show you the method that works for me using old fashioned FBX export. To do this, you have to understand that Unreal measures things in centimeters while Blender measures things in meters, which means in Blender, you'll need to go on the right and under the scene, change your measurements to 0.01. Now, if you've already weight painted everything, you're probably going to have to export it tiny and then scale up later in Unreal. If you have not started the rigging process, just select your mesh, select your rig and scale everything up by 100. Then control A and apply all transformations and your stuff should be scaled normally in unreal now if you okay. have way painted and rigged your character already if you try and scale it up to 100 then your rig will probably explode the only real solution to this is really to unparent detach and rig it all correctly all over again from the correct scale after you control a and apply transformations from the correct scale so if you haven't rigged yet do all the scale stuff ahead of time but like i said if you've already rigged everything not all hope is lost you can still export it and scale it up in unreal regardless We'll the way that. this works is you upload the rig separately with no animations and then you upload the animations for that rig later. 
First we export the rig alone by shift clicking all the meshes, shift clicking the rig, then file, export, FBX, select it only. If you have modifiers you want to apply, you can apply them. Change smoothing from normal to face. Okay, I think I, I think I see kind of what we need to do here. Unreal Engine Character Rig. Download. Is this a, a paid thing? Hmm. So we can auto rig this guy. All right, uh, we can try it. <clears throat> Although I think we'll lose the face rigging, right? Body rig, hand rig. What does that say? It's so tiny. Shoulder, neck, finger. Wow, look at that guy. I would like a hug. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, so essentially, it seems like he's been infected by the South Park Canadians. Now, that's if my my head was like totally coming off my body, right? The top of my head was detaching. Although that would be a really funny, that'd be a really funny toggle, wouldn't it? <laughs> now I'm emoticoning. I'm emojiing. Well, I'm not emojiing at all. Because emojis are a specific thing. I guess emoticon is the correct word. Yes. Uh, tragedy has befallen us. We've discovered that our guy has too many root bones. How, how, how did you get so many root bones, bro? I thought I only had one root bone. I thought this was the root. Bone collection. So maybe maybe there's a way we can uh, fix this. How you doing? <laughs> that did catch me off guard. I will admit. Good. I'm doing good. I was talking earlier about how I I went to see my very first uh, German uh, football game, and it was I mean it was a lot of fun. I had a Flammkuchen, which is pretty delicious, delicious, delicious German treat. Flammkuchen. You know what a flammkuchen is? Uh, it looks like this. It's like a pizza. It's like a pizza 
but with just uh, what would you call that? Ugh, rab cooking. It's got green onions and normal onions and bacon and schmand. Schmand. What is schmand? It's like it's like sour cream, essentially. Bought my very first air fryer today, so that's my exciting event for the day. Oh shit. That's so cool. What are you gonna uh do with it? Oh, Joey, currently know you have so many videos. Error. This is this is what I'm talking about. Error. Multiple root bones found in the body. What am I going to do with it? Fry food with hot air, of course. Yeah, but what's the first thing you're going to make? Is uh, what I mean. I think everybody does like popcorn first thing, right? Most people do popcorn. Uh, or chicken wings. I hear chicken wings are friable with an air fryer. Just stick anything in there. Marshmallows, apples, uh, applesauce. Fry it. Fry it with hot air. That's the goal. Oh, oh you did your store-bought chicken wraps. Oh, hell yeah. How were they? Was was the air fryer experience so good for you? Are you? Have you become a convert? Are you going to go on local forums and claim the superiority of the air fryer? I've been I, I have been tempted. I've been tempted by the air fryer. Uh, although I think I need a rice cooker first. If I'm going to do a specialty thing, food maker, it's going to be a rice cooker before it's an air fryer. Just saying. <laughs> Still eating them and it is so much nicer than the oven. I bet it's faster, too. All right. I need this tutorial to play at 180p so I can see this happening. All right. For here, visibility. We select the armature. Go to the bones. 20 minutes for these instead of 30 and 20 C lower as well. Yeah. Well, honestly, ugh. honestly, one of the worst parts about using an oven for anything is that in the summer it's so hot so i know it's winter for you but for me i've been trying to use the oven less because it just turns the kitchen into a little sweat box i'm not i'm not very good at that What, what is he looking at? Relations? Bone collections? I know what you mean there. 
I'm uh, I'm very much a lover of the cold weather. I'm a I'm a I'm a frost child. I'm a freeze baby, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I don't want to. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be in the warm places full of warmness. My actually, actually my friend, uh, I like warm, so 18 to 23 is my comfort zone. 23 is probably the maximum for me. I would say like zero to 15 is my favorite. And and it's nice that Berlin actually doesn't doesn't get too hot or too cold. Although I was talking to a guy from, um, I believe India, and damn, he was like, uh, <laughs> Berlin gets way too cold. He he's like, I would prefer it if it was like thirty five or forty. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I would die. It's supposed to be 26 today and I'm going to die. <laughs> this is the last this is the last dream. I'm going to melt. And my skin will lay from my bones and I will be no more. Our normal winners <laughs> fuck that on all accounts. Seriously, like how do you survive? Uh literally how do you survive? Uh this is like the climate refugee situation, you know, is you cannot survive in those temperatures. And yet those temperatures are appearing around the world. Climate refugee time. Yeah, I hope that the governments of the world are ready. They're not. But yeah, actually, um, Zero to 15 is like normal winter here in Berlin, too. And it is so lovely, except I could use more snow. But I know that snow only happens below zero. I'm OK with temperatures below zero. Uh, but, you know, even I have to bundle up at that point. But we went to Iceland uh, in the summer of last year and Dang, it was the middle of the summer and it was like a balmy 12. And I was like, this is my GM. This is what I want. A, a high of 12 for the year. <laughs> Perfect. Perfection. Moi. All right. We set the viewport display. It. Our summers are usually around 20 to 32, depending if you're north or south island. South is a bit cooler. High of 28 to 30 usually. Like. That, that sounds horrible to me, but also that's a still about the same as Berlin. It's just there's probably like one week in the entire year that acts like that. And we're we're doing our best to um, we're doing our best to stay out of that. It is horrible. Yeah, we're planning a we're planning a trip in August. Um, and hopefully going places with with air conditioning. Bone colors, I don't need bone colors. All right, select the armature. I like autumn is my favorite season. It's not hot nor cold. It's the most colorful as well. Yeah. Um, 
autumn is clearly the best season. My order is autumn, winter, summer, spring. Spring is summer is hotter, but spring is last because of allergies. It is it is a I'm a mess in spring. I can't handle it. <laughs> All right. Select the armature. Export to FBX. Yeah. Oh, it's a fucking name change? My bones are named incorrectly? Yeah, and then he tries to import it. Spring is... Uh, that's fair. I get hay fever all year round, so that makes it no different for me. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> you know, in the States, spring was always the worst. Here, spring is pretty bad. But I've also been getting a little bit of hay fever in autumn as well. And I think it's just because the plants here are different. So who the fuck knows uh, what's going on? I'm I'm hoping that after a few years, my body adjusts to it. But I know from experience that there are certain plants that my my allergies will just never adjust to. Uh, so I'm hoping, God, it would be awful if I adjusted to the spring pollens and then not to the autumn pollens and then autumn became the season of of hay fever. I would hate that. Uh, I would hate that. Look at them bones. He got bones. Yes, this is the error that I've been seeing. So I go to Blender. Right. Put any name that isn't armature. Wait, what? Really? Okay. F2. Guy Skeleton. No way. That's all it takes. Rename the armature. <laughs> Export to FBX. Yes. Now we go to here. Oh my God, that's all it took. <laughs> Fuck you, auto rigger. Uh, 
Oh my god. He lives. He's alive. He's in. He's in. He's fucking glowing. I've heard that a good way to deal with hay fever is to eat honey made from your local areas as it's used with pollen from where you're from. So injecting it like that is supposed to help the hay fever system as your body gets used to it through the honey. Okay. I've heard that as well. What I need to do is uh, some some Sunday morning after I'm done uh, uh, streaming with Dolu, I need to go... I need to go to my local, um, whatchamacallit. I need to go to my local flea market. Why is he glowing? So, yes. It is it is very emissive color. Don't want any. Find a local bee farm. You know, that's not a bad idea. Um all right. Uh, scale objects. No active level sequence editor detected. Please edit a level sequence to enable full controls. The question is, can we can we control this guy from here? Animation mode, Unreal Engine. Hello, in this video, I'm going to go over how you can make custom animations for the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. So to get started, we want to go over here and click this little director's icon and click add level sequence and just save this anywhere in your project once you've done this just open right up your content drawer and find the unreal engine mannequin once you've done this drag why don't we, why don't, okay, we have this guy in here. Uh, so we need a level sequence editor, right? Add level sequence. Uh, new level sequence, that's fine. Okay. We have a sequencer now. Drag one of the animations somewhere in your level. Once you've dragged in your animation, simply go to your sequence and go track then go add to sequence and select the animation that you just imported. Ah.
What am I moving here? I have a question about the Elden Ring mod you and Dilda use. What happens if you want to invade someone? Or is all that stuff turned off by default? Uh, yeah, so that is that is the trouble part, right? Um, do I have to import with the skeleton? Uh, so it doesn't actually... Um, Let's let's try just bringing in a few of these guys. It doesn't actually use the same whatchamacallit. It doesn't use the same uh servers. It uses its own servers. So you can't get invaded at all. I would like to pivot you. Okay, I can move. Can I rotate? I can rotate. But it's only giving me the one control. Poses. Let's make this bigger so I can see all this thing. What if you also want to invade someone? I guess that's a no. Thinking because in terms of like Volcano Manor Quest, you need to invade NPCs or for the likes of R8. To get into Moog's domain, you got to invade three other people. Uh, not actually true. Not actually true. Uh, there is a place in Altus Plateau where you can use a bloody finger to invade someone. And if you do that, you can get uh, into Moog's domain offline, which is pretty slick. But we killed Vare. So. <laughs> All right. Let's select this guy. So I'm noticing that several things are going wrong. First off, he's Transcend transcendent. So ways around things like that. That's cool. It would suck if to be soft locked from content otherwise. Yeah, for sure. Um Man. There we go. Trying to remember how to move around in Blender. <laughs> uh, yeah, invasions are just not functional. Even NPC invasions like Volcano Manor quest lines, you just can't do them in the mod. Uh, you can still do them. You just have to disconnect from the group in order to do them. So that's what Dolan and I've been doing. Just uh, doing those by ourselves. Ugh. Okay. So we have business guy imported
We have business guy imported. Animation. Use custom mode. So it's worked around, just got to treat them like you normally would with no mod. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not the best. Is this the most I can do in Unreal? Why can't I see my, my rig, you know? Then go add to the sequence and select that. And for example, I can just move this here. So basically using these tools, go sequence and go track, then go add to sequence and select the animation that you just imported. So to get started, you wanna go over here and click this little director's icon and click add level sequence. And just save this anywhere in your project. Once you've done this, just open up your content drawer and find the Unreal Engine mannequin. The Unreal Engine Mannequin. Starter content. Props. Starter content. Not materials. Yeah, where's the mannequin? Search all. It's not in here. I guess, you know, what we can do. Uh, can we go to that one place? Can we go to that one place? Was it in settings? Where do we go to, uh, tools? Help. There was a thing in here somewhere where we went to where where we where we downloaded the Asaville stuff from. Crap. Where was that? Import? No. <sighs> Quixel Bridge. <clears throat> Quixel Bridge.
Uh, we can use one of the metahumans. Let's do essential. 3D decal imperfection surfaces. Collections. Community. There's so many, so many assets here. Three D assets. Would they be under props? Where are the people? Quixelbridge, where are the where are the models? Where, where's where's the Unreal Five mannequin? Maybe place actor under character. The hell is that? Is the mannequin in here? No. I'm... I'm very confused. But I believe it was the open marketplace where we... Opens the marketplace. Has the marketplace been opened? I don't see it. Uh... <laughs> we managed to get the guy into Unreal. Look at that. Oh. Did the internet go out? I think yep. the internet went out. Dear VOD watchers, <laughs> be grateful. Be grateful knowing that you get to see this. Incredible. Oh, it's back. Oh. Are we back? Reconnection successful. Huzzah. All right. Now, now let's try to open the marketplace, shall we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> search projects. Mannequin. Not Manon. Uh, max price. Free. This looks like... <laughs> I don't know, Isaac, seems like the company is beginning to oversimplify you. Uh, yes, I, my face has been demoted in order to, uh, save energy. <laughs> uh, and the internet just tick up. But at least I know it wasn't my computer.
But how are you, Ray? Welcome. Glad to have you here. I hope you are good, good, good. Can I not? Good. I'm less mad now that I got a successful modded Minecraft expedition. Ooh. Very cool, very cool. Let's try reloading the marketplace. Cool. Mannequin, max price, free. Uh, no, go back. Results for mana. That's, that's, that's free. I want this one. Do I have to add to project? There we go. Add to project. How are you lately? Oh, well, I've been good. I've been very social lately. What's the deal with that? I'm not an introvert at all. The hell? I'm, uh... Oh, uh, yes. I've added the mannequins to the project, so let's... Game control rig. Path. All right. We want a control rig? Is that what I'm saying? Sounds good. Trying to finish studies myself, coding a new website. Nice. That's pretty sick. Uh, how's Kambalan? We deleted him. I, I deleted him off screen. Sorry, Kambalan. Once you've done this, drag one of the animations somewhere in your level. Drag one of the animations. Uh, yes, this is no longer Calm Ballin's world. Farewell, Ballin of Calm. Fare thee well. Okay. We have this mannequin. Animation mode. Sorry. Select the mannequin. Don't select the street. Once you've dragged in your animation, simply go to your sequence and go track, then go active to sequence and select the animation that you just imported. You want to see all these little lines appear around your character. Using them, we're going to basically animate our character. So if I select Uh, we were looking for Manny, right? No. Select, select, select. Shoot. Select our character, actor to sequencer, add my guy. This blue one here. With select and rotate object selected, 
If I just move this, I can rotate my character's hand. Oh. But how? Anthes just transforms. All right, I don't think I, I don't think I brought in the right thing. Um. Okay. Track one of the animations somewhere. We need an animation sequence. Okay. Go to the sequencer. Actors sequencer. Add it. Oh, it's thinking. <gasps> Look at that! Controls! Uh, that's not right. Okay. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. Your level. Once you've dragged in your animation, simply go to your sequence and go track, then go actor to sequence and select the animation that you just imported. You want to see all the. So. <clears throat> what we need to do is how to make UE5 animation sequence in Blender. You create a shot from your sequence. So right now, business guy has a skeletal mesh, a physics asset, and a skeleton. Is there a way we can export? Export as Blender, export as animation sequence object. So we need to export as object and we need to select the animation option.
Okay. So now we have that go to the same place. No, I don't think so. Where did I throw that? Into the blender folder, of course. Animation export. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, God. It has exported this guy 250 times. The question is, will even one of these work? Okay, now we have a, a strange, strange guy. I was told that he might be very small. <laughs> He's very small and very, I need I need him to be scaled the fuck up. No, that's not what I want. Also not what I want. Okay. We have here a static mesh. I'm guessing that's not what I want. Oh boy, okay. This, I am sure, will not be animatable. Add, actor sequencer, my guy one. Nope. Undo. So let's just, let's just, uh, delete this guy, delete this guy. Goodbye. So this is a skeleton, huh? Skeletal mesh actor. What are you? Also a skeletal mesh actor. Okay. So I think the object is right. My guy, that skeleton. Unreal Engine. Skeleton. The Blender.
So, some of you last video were like, this is cool, but where do I get the Unreal 5 rig? And so I just wanted to show you where to get it. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in Maya because the process is really easy due to the fact that Maya and Unreal are basically the industry standard and they've always worked together really well. So I will try God and do damn. a video on Blender later. But for now, if you want to get the official Unreal 5 rig intact and easily, if you open the third person demo project in the content browser under content, characters, mannequins and meshes you will see one called sk mannequin drag that into your scene and under the details area set location to zero 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 and make sure that the rotation is also at zero 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 then at the top okay let's let's uh let's save save our demonstration town um Open level. under file export what's the name of this guy there's mannequins and meshes you will see one called sk mannequin drag okay content browser search sk now control rig mannequins Meshes, SK Mannequin. Put them in here. Reset the transform to zero zero zero. So here's our here's our uh, zero point on the world. By the way. Okay that into your scene and under the details area set location to zero 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 and make sure that the rotation is also at zero 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 then at the top under file export selected and save it wherever you want then in maya go to file import fbx find your file and okay uh let's save this to blender so this is Unreal Mannequin Export. Oh shit, Blender's still the only thing visible on the screen. Sorry. All right, Blender. Import. It should appear the correct size ready to go open the group until you see the root bone then middle click and drag the root outside the group and you're done from here you just drag your character mesh on top and move the bones to match your character just make sure that you don't f up the rotation of the joints while you're moving them around this is not a rigging video so i won't bore you with the instructions right okay so we have guy skeleton I think I think what I want to do is I want to make a new thing save as my guy UE scale dot blend. OK, so we have a new my my guy UE spell. Let's just delete all the bones. We have this model. Good, good, good. All right. So now we need to bring in, oh my God. Sorry, just a second. I need to fucking take care of this bullshit. Yeah. So we go to Blender. Oh my God. It, 
fucking exported here to 250 my guys. Okay. Unreal mannequin, 3D object. Bring it in, bring it in. Can we not bring it in? Uh, import FBX, Unreal mannequin. There he be, there he be. All right. So let's turn off my character real quick. So. So here are the bones. This is how they do the bones, apparently. This is a hell of a, a rig, huh? Are these all control bones? No way. Okay, can we just play around with this for a second? I want to play around with this for a second. Um, pose mode. What the hell? How does this work? Your brain's thinking of Imagine Dragon Bones? Dude, these do look like Dragon Bones. Is this really how people rig in the professional, like, 3D world? Look, we can make his toe really long. Got it. Foot, foot bone. Why are so many of these bones? Okay, so see, these bones are connected. Does that mean this is good too? Yes, but this is not. What the hell? Uh, I need these to be sticks so I can actually see what's uh, going on in these random. Oh my God, look at the hands. Recall the original rigs for the original Madagascar. They were kind of like this, but the bones were shaped like armor plates on their bodies. Oh, that is wild. As opposed to the acupuncture pins. Well, the fingers seem to make sense. This is... So detailed. I guess this is this is how you rig if you really, really want that level of detail, right? Ooh. Look away, children. There's some freaky shit happening.
Visibly, it makes sense. It certainly does work for squash and stretch purposes. Does it? Whoa. It's, it's extremely, uh, really, I should be like rotating from out here. Yeah, I feel like I feel like mastering this rig is going to be like an art form in itself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. I'm kind of getting overwhelmed. <laughs> It'll take time. So this is what Unreal Engine 5. Press E to expand dong. Expand dong. High kick. Very high kick. He kicks so hot. Play around with it. Make it do a silly dance. You know, that might be that might be what we want to do, actually. Let's uh you know void that toe. Do ballet. That's that's my uh <laughs> it's my prerogative. Follow the frog tutorial and mash up together with the walking tutorial and basically did that dance thing. Yeah, that's what I'm starting to feel like. I I think I think I need to find animations. So this this also leads me to a question. If I let's let's just let's just get rid of this, right? Oh, I need to I need to log in. Yes, it's me. Eyes guns. Your your chimera. Your local local chimera. Oh, it's Kambalan. He's back. Right. I I do have Kambalan already downloaded. Uh okay. Go to UE5. This is a 3D object. Imports. Can I import Kambala? <gasps> I did it. The hair didn't survive, apparently. Hair. But the armature. This is a much more real, reasonable armature. Look at this armature. Okay. So I believe what I can do is... Delete Kambalan. Leaving only his skeleton behind. Turn on our character. Uh, select all character parts. Select objects. Uh, set the 3D cursor as my pivot point. But I don't want the armature. I don't want the armature to scale. I want the armature to scale up. Right? 
Okay, I can, I can, I can do it. So let's get approximately Kambal in stature. Right, 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 right. And then I think we can, um, yeah, let's go to edit mode. Okay, we still have the mirror modifier on, excellent. Rotate on the X, rotate active element, rotate on the X. Let's just, let's just line this hand up so perfectly. So grab on the, grab on the, X. Uh, let's turn off that. Grab on the Y. Um, rotate slightly. That's pretty good. So now what we can do, I don't want to touch the skeleton too much. But if we've got it like nearly perfect like this, we can switch over to the armature. Yeah. Excuse me. Select the armature. What? Okay. Obviously that's wrong, right? So we want to No. We want to apply all transforms. And then Is it already linked? No, it couldn't be. So let's apply scale. Supply lo location and rotation. Perfect. So now if I go into edit mode, so here's our Oh God, I forget how to do this. I need a, I need an expert. Okay, let's just go back a bit and uh, put the hands back where they need to be. Okay, good. All right. Go into object mode. Select the armature, go into edit mode. And let's just 
Let's just adjust the armature so it's accurate to the guy. Let's not try to adjust the guy. Let's just adjust the armature so it's accurate to the guy. Is that even right? No, we can't do that. Because... No, we can do that. We can do that. So let's... Select all these. Rotate them on the x-axis. No, that can't be right. Because we're rotating the bones, and we're also doing it just on one side. I wish I, wish I was an expert, you know. I think we have to adjust the guy to the skeleton. I think that means we have to... How, how, how do you even do this? Reset the pose? No. Get rid of the animation. We have bones here. Surely we can turn them, turn our guy into the bones. Yeah, surely. Okay, so let's start with the jacket. Go into edit mode. The jacket is... <coughs> the jacket is not mirrored. So I think what we need to do, yeah, let's see if we can't, uh, just select this kind of like back part here, turn on this, and then just pull this back. Uh, that looks good. I mean, the hands are off, obviously. Yes, okay, that looks good. Uh, and then we just need to take this and this. No, not that way. That and that. And lower them down a little bit with plenty of adjustment like that. Yeah, so now the sleeves are very lined up. We love that. All right, we need the we need the legs to be a little bit um, 
thinner as well. Um, right. The legs are mirrored. Excellent. Okay, let's just select a random square here and grab in. Nice and... Long. Looking good. We're adjusting the model to the bones as one has to do when one did not make the model to the bones in the first place. Uh, why? Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Uh, then we need to adjust the shoes. Uh, so let's exit that. Let's go in here. Just select everything and grab on the X. Bring those shoes in. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Now all that's left is the hands, the hard part. The body, so let's select the body in object mode. The body is still mirrored. So what we gotta do, let's start by selecting everything on the hands and grab, oh, turn off my, it's called proportional editing. Grab down. Grab in. Okay, and it looks like we're at the right upper level. All right. And now rotate along the X. Rotate around the Z. Grab Z. Grab Z hand. All right, our hand is very clearly in the sleeve, which is good. Time to time to get it perfectly in position with these bone joints. Uh, so let's let's pull it in a little bit, shall we? We might need to adjust the jacket sleeve length a little bit since it seems that my guy's arms were uh, smaller or longer than Kambalans. Yeah, we'll have to do that. So let's not worry about the jacket right now and let's just pull it in until the, nu the knuckles match up. So our knuckles are looking good. Knuckles. So now let's take individual things Let's turn on proportional editing, make sure it's connected only. Good. And let's just grab, uh, make that proportional editing so much smaller. Yeah, let's do this from above. His fingers look weird. 
It's true. But it's what we got to do. Okay. From above, they look good. Let's check from the side. Uh, this one could be a little bit up. But otherwise, they look pretty good. And let's check from this angle. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but we can center these. Okay, still looking good from the top, still looking good from this angle. Okay, now the hard one, the thumb. So, one dimension at a time, right? Good. Good, 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 good. All right. And now that hand is very skeleton, isn't it? Let's check the other side. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Super good. Okay. Last step. We need to... We need to... Uh, Go to object mode on the jacket. And we just need to shorten the sleeves a little bit. So let's let's do it this way. Take that. No, wrong. Why aren't you selecting all the things? Okay, good. Then over here. No. I guess just manually select these edges. Okay. We've got all the selected edges going. Let's do the median point. Let's just scale them in a little bit until you can see the sleeves. And then maybe drag them down. Uh, rotate them until they're nice and clean. Okay. Oh my God, is it finally, finally, finally. All right, so now let's remember what we learned from the random Spanish guy video. Let's, uh, I must grab my last round of coffee for the night. I must focus. Well, thank you so much for hanging out, Demi. I do really appreciate it. Ugh. Good luck with good luck with whatever focusing you need to do for school or work or whatever. It's fun watching folks learn Blender. You're telling me. OK. So now that we have this. Thing. Right. We need to. Select body and then oh wait in object mode Pick 
pair with automatic weights. And move the head back a little bit. Oh, God. Joey Carlino, help me. Oh, he has a new rigging video from three weeks ago. Should I watch? I watch the. Should I watch the new rigging video? Joey, just show me your old rigging video. Character animation, here we go. Character skin modeling, mouth rig, foot rig, easy character rigging. Same time, it's not enough. All right. IK, yes. What's this called? Non-deforming bones. The body is parented and is moving along with our armature like that. But our, you know, everything else is not following because those are different objects. So I'm just going to reset that, go back into object mode, and we can do the same thing for our shoes. Yeah, we want this. Parenting bones. Another thing is that this bone is not really parented to anything, and I want to parent it to this bone right here, mm -hmm. this first mm -hmm. spine bone. To do that... Gotta go rest for now, by Isaac. Nice to it. You too, Ray. Thank you for thank you for chilling. Thank you for hanging out. Always appreciated. That you would select the leg bone, then mm -hmm. select the spine right here, and hit Control P, and you want to choose Brenda, Keep Brenda, Offset. Brenda. When you do that, you'll see that relationship line. If instead you did connected, it will actually move the bone to make them connected, and obviously that messes up our skeleton. So I don't want to do that. Just make sure you use keep offset. So now I'm going to talk about axes, and this is the reason why I have the axes displayed is because I. It's kind of like uh, get it close for the elbow here. So what I'm going to do next, I'll select our foot, and we look at the mirror modifier. So with that there, I'm going to extrude. Again. I've been doing just select each part and drag them over like offset. So now I'm going to talk about axes and then select this leg movement to rotate these make sure you're back in edit mode you see. so to name the i'm going to select all right i believe if i have the armature selected and i go into pose mode right now yeah the my guy does not move select the knee right here and extrude it so i and change the pull angle once again to go over to that. Okay, so we're almost ready to flip. And this one is target. If we select our target bone right, but our you know everything else is not following because what we can do is we can go to each of our bones and turn. if we select our target bone right here and go over to these uh, this bone properties tab, you can see that it's set to deform right here. This has a check. Right. Um, and that means when we parent our mesh Getting to the, the mesh armature, to it's going to look for all of the bones that have this turned on, and it's going to try to assign weight off individual control form to to the armature. So mode right here, and we can start parenting our mesh to the armature. So uh -huh. I'm going to select the body right here, shift select the armature, control P, and choose with automatic weights. Okay. So... Oh, oops, uh, I guess I should. So the body is now poking out of the jacket again because we, we adjusted the jacket backwards. So I think what that means is we need to disappear the jacket and go back into edit mode on the body.
Does that look okay? Almost, almost. So this, this line right here. There, we have we have successfully given him the thinnest shoulders possible. He is, he is becoming the true uh, beta. Oh, you know, now that I'm looking at this, the neck isn't working, is it? Okay, let's disappear the head. Take that. Disappear the jacket. Okay. So now our, our neck works. Make that neck work. So let's bring the head back in. And we just need to go to object mode. We need the head and the hair and the eyes and the eyelids. Uh, everything but the shoes. Uh, we need all you to just kind of scooch yourselves back a little bit. The tie can come back too. Scoot yourselves back and notice how the eyelids have kind of messed up. So let's select the eyelids and scooch them back to where they need to be, which is um, slightly forward. So we get that good, good look of despair. Perfect. He's despairing. Okay. And now if we select our armature and go into pose mode, you All right. So. Select body. Shift select the armature. Parent with automatic weights. Now that doesn't look right. You can see that the body is parented and is moving along with our armature like that. But our, you know, everything else is not following because those are different objects. So I'm just going to reset that, go back into object mode, and we can do the same thing for our shoes. With automatic weights, same for the vest, we can select that, then the armature, control P, automatic weights. And for the head, we're going to do something slightly different. So I think what we have to do with this body is... Um... No, 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 no. Apply all the transforms. Now, select the body, shift select the armature, parent with automatic weights. With empty groups, okay. Automatic weights fucks it up. Yeah. So now we go select the armature, go to pose mode. Now does this work? No. Object mode. Select body. Shift select thing. Parent 
with envelope weights. Pose mode. No good, huh? because we only want the head to follow this one head bone. So I'm going to select the head, the eye. What? Is eyelids and the hat then shift select the armature control tab to go into pose mode and just make sure the only bone that's selected in pose mode is the head and we can hit control p and instead of with automatic weights we're going to choose bone and that's oh okay let's try that let's try choosing bone okay select body select armature control p Bone. All right. Pose mode. It didn't do the thing. Just going to make it. Let's let's go to so blender bone parent not working. I made this low character poly mesh. Mm. So we select the body first in object mode. Select the body first. People in this Reddit thread are uh, wild. Why is it even changing over here? Parent the bones to each other first. Are these bones not parented? I don't know if these bones are parented.
Why? So. Uh, let's go into edit mode. Look at these bones. So this is parented to neck. Okay, so the bones are parented. Here's the root bone. Head top end, head left leg up, head. Spine is connected to hips. So the bones are indeed parented to each other. Okay. Blunderbone. Automatic weights. Blunder armature. Automatic weights not working. Okay. Right here. Now I'm going to go back into object mode right here, and we can start parenting our mesh to the armature. So I'm going to select the body right here, shift select the armature, control P, and choose with automatic weights. And now if we select our armature and go into pose mode, you can see that the body is parented and is moving along with our armature like that. Oh, but our, you know, everything else try. is not following because those are different objects. So I'm just going to reset that, go back into object mode, and we can do the same thing for our shoes. Oh, shit, what the hell? Okay, so maybe, maybe I understand what we need to do here. We need to go into the body. We have another armature already on here. See, that's probably the problem. Let's just apply all. Yeah, we've got a, two armatures on here, and I'm betting that is the issue. You know, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, I bet we don't even need the mirror subdivide get rid of the mirror and subdivision. So let's try this. Parent, with automatic weight, still does the fucking bullshit. Okay. Um, just apply all modifiers. All right. Body? Thing? Hey, okay, that is a lot better. Ah, I see. Okay, 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 okay. So in edit mode, Why is the, uh, can I select all and just, um, undo all rotations and movement? Okay. Yes. Ah, oh my God. It was already posed. Okay. So we we aligned our model to the already posed model. 
So now it's not posed, which means, of course, we have to realign, realign the model. But now I know what I'm doing. Shouldn't be too bad. All right. So disappear body. Let's just check the jacket. Check the jacket. It's a little, a little far back, don't you think? Okay. Uh, just, just the jacket, please. Skeleton in a jacket. I bet that I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that the reason our armature was fucking up is because we had. Two armatures, actually. Our, our armature modifier was still on, even though we had deleted the old armature. Uh, okay. Into edit mode. Um, mm hmm and then with proportional editing on, let's just move this forward. Slick. Okay. Uh, how's that look? Looks pretty good front to back. It's a little um, high, don't you think? So let's select this and this. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, this should be a Blender stream now. I totally, I'm just doing things in Blender. Okay, jacket, good. Uh, how's the head position? Head position is still good. So I think we just need to adjust the body. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So go to object mode, select the body, go to edit mode. Oh, and... Fucking hell. All right. Yeah, okay. I've got to go back quite a ways. Select the body. Not the head, the body. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. So we reset the, the thing. We need to go back further though. Let's look at our body modifiers now. Yes, okay, here we go. All right. So we're on the body, keep the mirror modifier, delete the armature modifier. On the jacket, delete the modifier. Uh, does the tie, does the head, the head has an armature modifier as well. That's probably why it was also fucking up. The eyes have an armor, armature modifier. The eyelids do not. The hair does not. Okay. Keep our shit in place. Go to pose mode. Select all. Uh, 
Reset all rotations, reset all movements. Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, I guess we can reset all scaling too. All right, now we go. Uh, okay. that's that's an easy way to do that okay now we adjust the the model so into edit mode good 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 all right Push forward. And push down. All right. Skeleton wearing a jacket. Yeah. All right. Back to object mode. Give me these two. And let's go to edit mode on the body. All right. And we still have the mirror modifier. Fan flipping plastic. All right. Start with the neck. Neck looks good. All right, got to do the hands again. Select all links. Uh, just move that wrist into position. Looks good. Uh, let's rotate it. Pull it forward. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So now, turn on our proportional editing. Need to pull this in line like so. Is that the right? Let's do this from the, the top first, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So pull this in line like so. Uh, pull this in line like so. Uh, pull this in line like so, and we can uh, rotate this a little bit too. And pull this in line like so. And of course, pull this in line uh, like so. All right. Now from the side, the thumb is good, but we need to do it from this side. Oh boy, that's hard to see. So is that is that right? Well, 
What is happening? No, this is not what I want. Okay, so it's actually that vertex. All right, we need to pull that down a little bit. How's that look then? That's looking good. It's looking like a hand. It's always a good first step. All right. And uh, just want to check the other side. Nice. With a thumb, thumb, do we need to adjust the thumb? A little bit more. Yeah, I probably need to adjust this thumb a little bit more. So let's just pull that out a bit. No, wait. It's too big on the proportional editing. Let's pull that out a bit, but not so much with the other things. Do, 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 do. Do. Uh, do. Yeah, it looks a little funky, doesn't it? Oh, whatever. We'll have weirdly spindly hands. Perfect for working in an office. Uh-huh. Okay. So now let's do the legs. Just bring them into alignment there. Then let's right. In order to get the mesh to deform properly, we need this subdivision section uh, higher around the joint. Good. And then we kind of want this around the joint too. Good. Fortunately, we got rid of the elbows, but we should check. Uh, we should check the subdivisions on the jacket. Okay, they're still they're still around the same area. That's good. That's good. Maybe we can. Um, nah. It's good. It's good. Okay. Need to adjust the shoes. Yes, good. Oh my God, okay. So now, oh, did the shoes have a fucking armature on them as well? Okay, get rid of that. Everything had an armature. I bet the teeth do too. They do. Get out of here. We don't want your, we don't want your pre-positioned armatures. We want to make a new one, a new and beautiful one. If only the world were as beautiful as I. Some villain shit. So now, select, select, parent with automatic weights, and oh, oh, et voila! Not only does it not 
absolutely fuck up, but it's kind of working. Kind of. <laughs> With automatic weights, same for the vest, we can select that and the armature, control P. So now... Okay, get rid of the parenting. Now do we undo the uh, mirror modifier here? Will that help things? Apply all these modifiers. Cool. Select. Parent with automatic weights. Pose mode. Now look at you. Look at you now! Automatic weights, and for the head, Okay, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So now we take the jacket. Parent with automatic weights. We're going to do something slightly different because we only want the head to follow this one head bone. So I'm going to select the head, the eyes, eyelids, and the hat. Then shift select the armature, control tab to go into pose mode. And just make sure the only bone that's selected in pose mode is the head. Mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. Okay, select select all my head objects. Uh, shift select the armature. Go into pose mode. Select the bone. Parent to bone. All right. I didn't select all my head objects. The teeth. The teeth. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's. Also select teeth, teeth, an armature, parent everything to that bone. Now, even the teeth move. Wonderful. Are we going to have to re-rig this guy's mouth? Maybe. We can hit control P. And instead of with automatic weights, we're going to choose bone. And that's just going to make it so that it's uh, all of those objects are only parented to this one bone like that, and it just kind of ignores all of the other ones. So just to make posing a little more clear, we can clear up some of this mess, go over to the object data properties. I'm going to turn off names, and I'm going to change uh, octahedral to stick, just to make our bones look a little different. They're not as intrusive. Um, and we can just play around with our armature to see what is broken and what looks good. So first thing I notice is that when we move our leg, the vest is also moving. And I don't really like the way it's doing that, so I might fix that with weight painting. Another thing is if we move our character good. down, you can see the heel is lifting up that like that. Good. And so I'll also fix that with weight painting. Another thing that we could fix good. is you can see when we move the arm, the collar right here is moving like that. Let's reset this and uh, talk a little more about weight painting. To do that, go back into object mode up here. Um, you can hit control tab to go into weight paint right here, or you can change that up here. So now we're in weight paint mode, and if you go over to object data properties, you can see we have all of these vertex groups right here. And these were created automatically when we parented the vest to our armature with automatic weights. And basically there should be one vertex group for each of the deforming bones. And if we click through these, you can see different colors appearing. And they're basically displaying the weights associated with the bone that you're selecting. So mm -hmm. this would be uh, the second spine bone, which I know is right here. The first one is right here. Uh, blue would be no influence at all. Red would be complete influence. And anywhere in between is just partial. Oh, our old bones okay. are still um, And you here. would think that maybe you could just select the bones, um, just click them to select them, but you can't do it that way. Um, you would have to just go through here to find the bone. There is one easier way though, 
And so if you go up to edit right here, you can see lock object modes. This is turned on uh, and it should be turned on by default, but you can turn it off. And what this lets you do um, is switch f uh, between different objects more easily. So right now we have our vest selected, but we can select our armature now um, with control and left click like that. And it'll just automatically switch us over to our armature and it's in object mode. And if we click on our vest again, you can see it switches back over to our vest, but we're still in weight paint mode. So that's what it does. It makes it so that it doesn't, you don't really have to switch back into object mode like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to control click our armature and change this to pose mode. So I changed it to pose mode up here and then we can just select our vest again. And I just left clicked it. But if that doesn't work for you, you can also select your vest over here like that. So now that we're in pose mode for our armature and weight paint for our, uh, our vest right here, it will actually let you select bones. I can just control click the thigh bone right here and it will display the weight. It will also allow you to pose while you're in weight paint mode. So I can just control click this bone right here and shift click that other controller bone. And I can just move both of the legs up with G. So I can just control click the thigh right there. And up here, you have uh, active tool settings like that. And you can just change uh, your weights over here that you're painting on. So if I start painting, you can see that it's adding weights and I don't want to do that. I want to take weights away from this bone. So we can turn the weight all the way to zero and we can start painting. But what I want to do is make sure that when I paint this side, the other side is affected also. So to do that, we have this symmetry option and the one you would want is vertex group X. You could also mirror it with X like that. Vertex group X, I believe what it does, you can see this has dot L next to it. So I think what it does is it looks for the one that says dot R, so thigh dot R, and we'll apply the same weights to it like that. I believe that's how it works. We also have this other option that I like to use called auto normalize. So I think what auto normalize does is it kind of looks for uh, two bones that are sharing influence over the same mesh like that. So you can see that the thigh bone and the spine right here, they both kind of share influence over this spot. Um, and it makes it so that if I was to add influence here, it would take uh, influence away over here like that. And so it should make it so that two bones can never have full influence over the same thing. So I like to turn that on also. So I can just select our thigh now. And once again, make sure weight is down all the way and strength is up. And you can just start painting over here like that. And you can see it's affecting the other side too now. Um, you also have these other options over here. You can get those by hitting T in the viewport. Um, another one I know people like to use is smear or gradient. There is a shortcut for gradient. If you're just using the draw brush right here, you can hold alt and then left click like that. Not sure why, but sometimes it doesn't mirror to the other side when using the gradient that way. So I just like to control click over and do the same thing on the other side like that. And you can see now that the thigh isn't moving our vest, so that's good. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the shoes. So I'm just going to select our hip right here and move that down so that our heels pop up right here. And then I'm going to uh, control click to select the shoes and switch into weight paint right here. And we can just select this uh, foot bone right there. And once again, I want to make sure auto normalize is on vertex group X. And I'm also just going to turn this on too. And then we can just start painting, but you can see it's going to be taking weights away like that. So I just want to turn the weight all the, the way tutorial. up like that. I'm and we can just start painting on our heel this. now like Shit. this until it snaps to the ground. And if you want a, a partial weight, that's not just um, zero or one. You could either change the weight to something in between, but what I like to do is change the strength to something like 0.25 or something like that. So you can do that for spots like this, and it'll just be more gradual like that. And you can see now that our heels are staying on the ground the way we want. So I'm going to go back to the vest now and just uh, fix up our collar real quick by selecting this bone right here. Yeah, so now it moves the front and of the And now vest, it's not moves moving it, so that's good. And when you're done weight painting, you should just uh, turn lock Perfect. object modes back on like that. So now we have our character successfully rigged. Turn off wireframe. And if you want to, you can turn off simplify too, but it might run a little slower in the viewport. So I'm going to leave it on, but I'm just going to turn it up very slightly. And I'm also going to go into look dev mode so I can see our character a little better. And I'm just going to explain a few posing tips for you. So you just want to select your... Okay. 
Rigged. Rigged, everything's rigged. Okay, so now we rename the armature. My guy, Unreal Engine Skeleton. And export this bad boy. Just select everything. Export this bad boy as a books. My guy pose. Dot for books. F bucks. Uh, path mode. Copy. Export. Okay. Save this shit. Let's uh. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go back. Business guy. Business guy, my guy pose. All right. Skeleton has non unique bone names. The bone name head was encountered more than once. Oh, that's not good. Oh, uh, right, because our old thing is still in here. Okay. To the bones. Bone collections. Um. So how do I, uh, mm -hmm. how do I, right. We already had a skeleton, huh? Bone constraints? No. Guess we want to go into pose mode. Where's all the bones? Oh. No bones assigned. Okay. Yeah. No wait, we don't want that. My 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 guy. All right. Go to armature. We want armature. Armature one is the one we want. But the root bones, the 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 other guy's bones are still in here. That's not good. We want armature one. Is this is this uh, gonna work now? Wait 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 wait. Path mode copy. Okay. Maybe. My guy pose. Import. 
failed. Why? Non unique bones. Okay, okay, okay. Go into pose mode. Hedge, top, end, head. But there shouldn't be... Yes, okay, the whole the whole structure is in here. Got it. Uh-huh. Edit mode. Edit the root. Can't edit the root. Okay. Go to the root. Go to edit mode. His head drops to the ground for some reason. Let's find that head bone. Neck, neck, head. Here's the bone. We found it. Okay. So what if we just... Dissolve that bone. Delete that bone. One bone gone. Now let's go back to object mode. Go back to armature one. So now, even though we have an extra quote unquote skeleton in the in the skeleton, this guy has three skeletons. Don't worry about it. Uh, we don't have any ununique bone names. Or we don't have any, yeah, only unique bone. We only have unique bone names. All right. Attempt number whatever. Import. Failed. Bone name head encountered more than once. Oh boy. I guess the other the other thing we could try. Is it possible to bring this skeleton in? Oh boy. All right. This is not music video making. It's a. And we are so over time. And I actually have things to do today, so we can't just sit here and and contemplate how to bone. We must. We must. We must stop for today. I I think I've I think I've hit a, a wall, and I need to. Maybe I need to start over. Maybe that's the truth. The truth is, I was never enough. Uh, so let's raid someone. Everybody's playing Elden Ring? At least one person's playing Elden Ring. Do I dare, uh, do I dare send my chat into someone playing Elden Ring? I think, I think I do actually. Because, uh, There is one of my uh, good friends, Chance Nezumi, doing stuff over here. All right, let's do it. I got to go do stuff. So it was a, it was an interesting stream, a, a frustrating stream, one would say. Not me. I wouldn't say that. In fact, I would say I learned a lot about rigging and about how the fuck to rig and about how not the fuck to rig. 
Uh, so if you're still in chat after that raid message, you must go raid Chance Nezumi. <gasps> Hell yeah. Thank you, everyone who stopped in. Thank you, everyone who stuck around. I'm your business, Camara. And until next time, good night, sleep tight, and don't let those Bitcoins bite. Farewell.